Today is the day. Today is the day that we showcase the 10 best retro handhelds on the market as of today. Now, I used to get tons of emails and messages on a daily basis asking, Brandon, what's the best retro handheld to pick up? So this video is gonna showcase my personal top 10 retro handhelds that you can pick up that will emulate your games using ROMs. So, this is this was incredibly hard for me to rank, especially when I got into the top five. There's going to be some you've seen, and I think there might be one or two that you probably haven't. So it's going to be interesting to see your comments. A lot of you, I think, will disagree with me, potentially, um, but this is obviously a personal preference. There's going to be different price ranges, different screen sizes, different handheld sizes, different performance uh, quality. Like it's going to be quite a broad uh, mixture of handhelds here, but hopefully you can take away um, an idea of which one to pick up if you haven't already. So before we jump in, let's take a look at today's sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends is a realistic fantasy RPG game available for free on iOS and Android. It's a turn-based game with stunning graphics and the ability to explore a new world with hundreds of champions from 16 playable factions. You must recruit and train these champions to fight giant monsters, take on large raids and attempt to find the strongest weapons in the world of Teleria. It requires tactical gameplay with timed strategies and the ability to buff up your champion with the best loot around. One major point I noticed while playing Raid Shadow Legends is the detail to the story campaign. It's impactful, interesting, and the illustrations used while telling some of the stories is quite incredible. If you're interested, go to the video description below, click on the special links and you'll instantly get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion within a week as part of the new player program to start your journey. So big up our sponsor for making this video possible. Now before I get into the top 10, I wanna tell you why you need to stay away from these products here. Now these are basically your gaming tablets that are all across Amazon and they reckon they can play your retro handhelds. They can, but these are extremely overpriced. This one here is £150. that uses an Android operating system which gets outdated very quickly and it ends up that Android, uh, it becomes, the operating system becomes so old that they stop updating it and it gets super slow and it's just really not enjoyable to play. Admittedly, it's big, it's got a big screen, but it's just very, very slow, low quality and overpriced. So you wanna stay away from these gaming tablets and go for actual retro handheld emulation or consoles that are built for those retro games, not these. So stay away from that crap. Let's jump into number 10. Now number 10, I wanted to bring this into the video because it doesn't exactly play ROMs, but it's a good introduction to the retro handheld community and one I think some of you will enjoy learning about. It's this one here. This is the Maker Bueno, a really cool little cute handheld. Uh, and it basically, it's running the Arduino platform inside. And the best bit for me about this is that you build it yourself. So you buy the kit, this comes in at 50 pounds. You buy the kit, you build it yourself. You can build it with your, your kids or your friends. And it becomes quite sentimental because not only did you build it yourself, everything is basically yours. Now you've got your little SD card slot in here where you install your games. And as mentioned, it uses the Arduino platform and that platform there has a huge community of members which build their own games. Now, I don't know if this has battery. It has battery, so I don't know if you can see there. Like it's not a colored screen or anything. It's nothing crazy. It won't play Pokemon or any PlayStation ROM games, but it is a cute little, uh, retro handheld that plays, you know, it doesn't play your classic games, but it it's near enough, you know. Admittedly, the buttons are very, very clicky. I just got hit then. But you build this yourself, it's got a backlight, don't know if you can see that. Which is really, really cool. And it, for only 50 quid, it makes a perfect gift. And it's got a ton of games that you can install. You just basically put the SD card into your, uh, your computer and install them from the web. I dig it and that's coming in at number 10. 
I apologize if it doesn't play ROMs and some of you are annoyed, but I think some of you might like this or it's a great gift for a kid or a friend that wants to get into the retro handheld community. So coming in at number nine was actually on a recent video and it was the PSP Nintendo Switch lookalike thing here. Now I have reviewed a lot of these PSP clones in the past. They keep getting updated. This is their latest version here and it's actually pretty good for a couple of reasons. One, it's only about 20 pounds or $25, so you're not gonna break the bank using this. Two, it does play ROMs somewhat well. And three, it's quite comfortable. The only downfall with one like this is that the screen's really bad. So that screen is actually on right now. I know, tell me about it, you can barely see it, but it plays your ROMs. You can install them via SD card slot down here. It's got okay audio. And it's got two analog sticks as well. And a couple of the higher end emulators are lacking analog sticks, which really frustrates me. Uh, I do love playing on an analog stick. Um, so you can play your Pokemon on here. You can install some cool NES ROMs as well. And it comes in a cool little form factor. So if you're looking for a very cheap retro handheld to get you into the market or one for a friend or a kid, this one is only like 25 bucks and it plays all your ROMs, comes with shoulder buttons, comes with save states, and it works quite well. So that is probably one of the cheapest on our list, but it is a good pickup coming in at number nine. Number eight, this one will surprise you. And if you've been on the retro handheld scene over the last few months, you will have seen it. It is this here, the LDK game. This one came out of nowhere. And for me, I've never heard of the LDK brand before, but they're coming out with a couple of good ones. And this one here is their square one. I'll just call it their like Game Boy Color version. Uh, it comes with a couple of good perks. The screen's great, it plays ROMs, it's very, very portable. This one comes in at 35 pounds. So again, like, it's not gonna break the bank. I always say anything under the 40 pound mark is affordable somewhat. Anything over the 50 pound mark is where things start to get a little bit expensive. But this will play a ton of ROMs. It's pocket sized, it, it's just compact, it's got good build quality as well. The screen's great, good battery life. My only downfall and the reason I placed it at number eight is it's very uncomfortable to play. So you could probably play with this for like 20 minutes or so. Anything after that, you're gonna, you're gonna have fingers that look like guns when you stop playing because this thing is just so uncomfortable. You've got your shoulder buttons, but like this thing, it, it's just not comfortable at all. And I don't think they really took into consideration uh, long-term play. I think they just wanted to make it kind of pocket form. Uh, and that was one of their biggest downfalls. But again, affordable, a cool little introduction, pocket-sized, and definitely worth being on our top 10 retro handheld list. Number seven, you would have definitely heard of this one. It is the OG BitBoy. Now you're probably wondering, Brandon, why aren't you playing these games on this video? If I were to play all the emulation games on this video, it'd be like an hour long. Uh, you can, I've reviewed most of these in separate videos. So if you wanna go through and hear a bigger, kind of more in depth review, there will be links below, just check out the channel. Uh, but the BitBoy is coming in at number seven and it only costs 25 pounds, which is very, very cheap. You could probably get it cheaper now because they've came out with a newer version, which you'll see in a minute. But this thing here is, it didn't change the retro handheld emulation world, but it definitely got a lot of popularity through a lot of sites. Uh, and this thing here is perfect. It's lightweight. Admittedly, it doesn't have shoulder buttons, which may lack some uh, games when you're playing. Uh, but in, ter in terms of like Game Boy games and small NES games and stuff, you should be fine playing on here. It's got a good little screen, not the best, but it's got really good battery life and it looks adorable. But most of all, it's only 25 quid and I reckon you can get that for 20 bucks if you look on eBay and stuff. So a very, very affordable, cheap, great emulation handheld here that I advise everyone interested to pick up because this thing is great. So he comes in at number seven, the OG BitBoy. So coming in at number six, this is where things start to pick up in terms of brownie points here. And this is one that you haven't seen on my channel yet. And it is this, the Retro Stone. Apologies, this has run out of battery because I've played it so much. Uh, but one of the main things you have to notice about this 
is the price tag. Now, because there's a Raspberry Pi inside, it does make it a little bit expensive, coming in at around about 130 pounds, 130 dollars. So it is on the more expensive side in terms of handheld consoles, but it can play your ROMs very, very well. It does struggle towards the PlayStation uh, ROMs like most of them do, but the screen is absolutely huge. And my favorite thing about this is the form factor. It reminds me of a Game Boy Color and I just absolutely love it. It's thick, you've got your volume rocker, you've got your four buttons, you've got your shoulder buttons as well. You've even got four USBs if you wanna add in controllers. Like this thing is an absolute beast, but you can build it yourself if you wanna do it a bit cheaper or you can buy it yourself. Uh, but the problem here is because they're obviously selling it uh, and it's illegal to put in uh, like ROMs and software, you do have to install the software yourself. And that was extremely complicated, almost to a point where I almost pulled out my own hair because it was that complicated. So if you're looking for a retro handheld and you know what you're doing, Take a look at the Retro Stone if you've got a bit of pocket money to spend. Just beware of the whole installing process. It is a bit stressful, but I love in the form factor, great size and a huge screen as well. Coming in at number five, this is where I struggled to start ranking them. Uh, and one that you might be surprised is only coming in at number five, and it is this. This is the BitBoy Pocket Go, BitBoy's latest handheld. And I've said a lot of good things about this if I zoom in, but it's only came in at number five for a number of reasons. The main reason is because the top four are really, really good. Uh, and this one just, the only problem with this is that it does have a lot of screen tearing. Uh, for those of you new, screen tearing is where the, the frame rates on certain kind of areas of your screen kind of skip before the rest. So it kind of looks like a little jolted line and things just don't run smoothly. So the BitBoy is a bit of a pain in the ass for that, but it has one of the best uh, form factors and comfortability factors by far on this list. It's perfect size, it's comfortable, it's super slim, super lightweight, and the build quality is superb. It just lacks great emulation and an analog stick. But again, very, very affordable coming in at, I haven't priced it. I think it's about the $30 mark, which is very, very affordable uh, and makes a great gift. A great, great handheld if, you're, if you don't mind too much screen tearing uh, and you want something that's very, very portable. BitBoy Pocket Go coming in at number five. This is where you start thinking, what the hell is the next four? And there's probably one or two in there you might not be expecting. Now, what is my number four? Oh, you'll, you'll know this one. You'll know this one for sure. I've, I love this thing. So this is the Clockwork Game Shell. And by far a great handheld, reminds me of the Game Boy Color, my favorite handheld of all time. But the best thing about this is that you make it yourself. Now you've got these little, uh, turntables here turntables i don't know the clock table things you twist them off and here is basically your modular game boy that you can take apart uh, and you build it yourself so you have to make all these modular parts and then put it together and then you've got yourself a retro handheld gaming device that you've basically just built yourself and the whole process was absolutely fun, I loved it, uh, and it is one of my favorite videos uh, made on a retro handheld in the past year or so, because it was just a ton of fun. You've got this Lego exterior on the back here, which you can add on, like trigger buttons and stuff. The only problem with this handheld is that it comes in at about $150, so it is expensive, but I promise you, if you pick it up, you will not be disappointed. This thing plays games great. You can add in uh, LEDs, you can add in your, your trigger buttons. It's got great battery life. I wish the screen was a little bit bigger, uh, but overall, one of my favorite handhelds of all time. And because you make it, again, it gets a little bit sentimental and one that you don't ever want to sell. And you can change the faceplates, so you can get different colors and stuff. Just a really, really cool retro handheld. If you've got a bit of money or you wanna treat yourself on Christmas or your birthday, pick up this, you will not be disappointed. Great job, Clockwork. Now we're on to number three. This is where things get really, really serious. And this is where like, 
full enjoyment comes in when I use these handhelds. Now, this handheld coming in at number three is one I've recently got my hands on about three or four weeks ago. And at first I was like, this is not gonna work. This is just too big. But I have fallen in love with it. And you may have seen it on our Instagram and our stories. It is this. This is the Game Boy 1UP XL made by GBZ Mods over on Instagram. And it is an absolute beast. This thing is heavy. It's big, it's got a big ass screen on it, some big speakers, it's got your shoulder buttons, and most of all, it can play PlayStation 1 and N64 ROMs perfectly well. So I've been playing uh, Nintendo 64 a lot uh, on Pokemon Stadium, and this thing, so you've obviously got, so I'm just reading some of the emulators on here, Game & Watch, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Original Game Boy, Sega Game Gear, uh, Dreamcast, Cave Story, you got your Commodore 64, Atari, your Apple II, you've got your Sinclair, you've got your Wonder Swan, your Virtual Boy, your, your N64, your Super Nintendo, PlayStation 1, you've got your PSP ROMs on here as well, your Neo Geo, like this thing plays everything. And all of the ROMs I've tested so far have been pretty good. And I can rely on this thing to play whatever I want on the go. And the fact that you can see inside of it and everything just makes this thing one of the most beautiful handhelds I've ever had my hands on. And I'm calling it that now. The sexiest looking ha retro handheld on the market as of today. Just look at this thing. So for some of you, this might not be up your street because this does cost a fair bit of money. I think it's between the 150 pound to 200 pound mark. So it is one of the most expensive handhelds on this list, but it is an absolute beast. They do do like micro versions. I think they've just came out with a Game Boy Advance version and like a small Game Boy Color version, which I want to get my hands on. But this is the 1UP XL that can play all of your ROMs, PSP and 64. This thing is just an app absolute unit and there will be a review in a separate video coming on this soon so definitely hit subscribe if you want to see that and find out why i love it now number two this is one that a lot of you may have heard of and its little brother came in at number eight i think and this is the ldk game horizontal now its little brother is here you know, it's got a different brighter yellow. This is more like a pissed yellow now. But this thing here is one of the best handhelds on the market as of today, under 50 pounds. This thing is great. It emulates well. It's pocket size. It's built well. It's got an analog stick. It's got a good little screen. It's comfortable. Like the little brother was just too square. This thing has no battery. I knew it. Uh, this thing is just a lot more comfortable in the hand. You've got screen brightness. The battery life's pretty good as well. You know, definitely get a few hours out of this. And the fact that it's portable and has an analog stick is why it's came in at number two. And it only costs about £35 as well. So again, affordable. And that's the price range where all of these handhelds are kind of coming out at. Out at sorry. Uh, and they're making it very, very competitive, which we love because that makes things cheaper for us. So this one here is number two, and it was a tough one. This was close to being number one, but it just didn't make it because of one main reason. So who is number one? Who is number one on the list? And one of I advise everyone getting hold of. And the problem with this straight up, right, it's one of the rarest handhelds on the market because the company who make these just aren't pumping them out. I don't know if they're making like 50 units a month and they're just going, but it is this here. This is the Digi Retro Boy and it is by far one of my favorite handhelds of all time for a number of reasons. One, it looks absolutely great. It reminds me of the original DMG Game Boy. It's slim. It emulates perfectly, but most of all, don't know if you can see here, it can play official Game Boy Advance cartridges. Yeah. Now, I'm pretty sure that's 100% illegal. They're not meant to do that, and probably why they're limiting uh, their market. Like, they don't do anything. They don't even you know advertise this thing they barely sell it now and then i'll spot it go live on amazon so there is a link below if it's out pick it up because it's not going to come back anytime soon i think they get a new batch in every three months 
Uh, but this thing is absolutely great. It's perfectly sized for my hands. I've got quite fat hands. So it's slightly bigger than the LDK. It's got a slightly bigger screen as well, which makes it just that extra bit more comfortable. The only thing I would have liked is an analog stick and the ability to play Game Boy Color games. Now, that's the only problem here. It can only play GBA cartridges, not Game Boy Color or original. Um, but yeah, like the screen's great. It's got turbo buttons, save states. It's got your original trade in a link cable there if you want to trade with Game Boys. You know, it's just a really, really cool handheld and it's a shame that it's not being advertised at all. Literally only by me. I've barely seen anyone else get hold of this. So this is it, the Digi Retro Boy. A very rare handheld that I advise everyone getting hold of because I'm a huge fan of Game Boy Advance games like Pokemon and that. So having it have the ability to use its own cartridge and saves is absolutely great. Plus it's got a headphone jack as well, you know? So there you have it. There is my top 10 retro handhelds of 2019. And that was one of the hardest lists I've done. I've been wanting to do that video for about three months now, um, but I've just been waiting on that Game Boy 1UP XL. I didn't think it would even make it in the top 10, but it did. Fair play. So there you have it, a long video. I appreciate it if you're all still watching. That is my number one. Pick it up, you will not be disappointed. I haven't told you the price. It's 80 pounds, so yes, quite expensive. Um, but you know, if you're buying an original Game Boy, that's like 20, 30 pounds anyway. Uh, you know, and this can play with this little adapter, which it comes with your ROMs as well, which you just put in there. So pick that one up if you can. As per usual, guys, I really appreciate you watching. Uh, if you want to read more on these handhelds, head over to retrododo.com. Hit us up on Twitter and Instagram with any questions. And if you do have more questions, drop them below. I'll be more than happy to answer. So as per usual, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.